Hello. Hello, you see me? Today, it's time for a new watch tutorial. I've been shooting a lot of watches and it's the hardest thing to shoot out there, I think, because they're very tiny, many different materials, glossy, matte, steel, gold, leather, you know. So it's very, very complicated because these flashes, they are very big and the watch is tiny, tiny. So this is very challenging. I've been avoiding to do this tutorial for very long because now I'm like, but now it's like 10.30 in the evening. So, and I started around 10 in the morning. And now I start to record like 12 hours later. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Of course I'm crazy. No one will uh, shoot for 12 hours. The thing about this video, I want to educate you, of course, and also I would like to educate all the clients who are asking me to shoot this kind of photos so they will realize the work that goes into this because um, many do not realize how much work it is with watches to make nice photograph you know i get at least one mail per week asking me to shoot their watches they are starting up a new brand and they're asking for the price and of course i realize that i have to lower the price for startup brands so maybe i say i want like thousand dollars per day so for one picture often i say one photograph will take one day including retouching and including free usage of the image i charge for one photo one day of work like one day uh, thousand dollars i say and then they disappear many asking oh can you please shoot like four like hero shots uh, of course i would love to do that and then i give them a price like okay it will be around four thousand dollars they're gone you know they don't calculate in a budget for images when they're starting a watch brand and I think that's the, one of the most important thing to have beautiful photos on the site when you're starting up a brand. In this camera, you will not see that much, but hopefully I can cut to, to this camera. Hello. And then you will see, here's the watch and uh, let's start. How should we start? There's a lot of stuff. I need to go through and there is a lot of images I need to take because there will be focus stacking going on here. We need to connect the computer. Maybe I should go through the stuff. Pro photo flashes. It's D2s and D1s. That's what I'm using most of the time. So it's like here up here we have two and I use one as a background and then I have one down here, Canon 5D Mark IV, and we're shooting Tedred into the computer to capture one. Capture one. In Sweden it's like, capture one, we say. We go up at the end, but I think in, in English it would be capture one, not capture one. I will take the first shot, and what do we get? We get this black frame as usual because it's only the flashes we want to go into this picture we don't want to have this leds or this ugly green color going into the to the watch so we need to cut everything out that's why i am at one two hundred of a second shutter speed aperture 10 iso i put up to 320. maybe you wonder why i'm not at iso 100 lowest the reason is the flash power is not enough for some of the flashes i have i think i almost have them all at maximum power when you're shooting this close close up you need to have a macro lens because now i'm like like this 20 30 centimeters from the watch and uh, the depth of field will be extremely short so i want to have a bit 
more depth of field. So I go up to aperture 10, but it will still be super short depth of field because I'm so close. And also I have this diffusion, shooting through diffusion paper, this Savage Plastic Translum. This is, um, I think this is medium and this is heavyweight. I haven't changed this yet. I should not use this heavyweight because it kills two stops of light. I should put out the medium. So not to waste so much power from the flashes. Then I could, can go down to ISO 100, but maybe I should start with the background. I often start with the background. So that flash is number C. Do you see anything in this camera? Yes, it's, that's the flash, you see. It says Pro Photo there. It's a D1. And I put on this. This is a Pro Box. I think you see it better from here, yes. You see the pro box there. This will create like a evenly lit background. You don't have to have this. You can have just a soft box or diffusion from behind if you like to have a white background. So let's take a shot with this pro box. And there you see the first one. This is the background. And there you're starting to see the watch. I have one flash down here. Yes, you see the grid here. If I turn it on, I think it's B. Yes, now you see the guy light. Let's take a shot. This flash hits on the side of the, the lugs, the upper lug and the downer lug, and also the crown. And as you see, it's super short depth of field. It's only sharp, the crown, and then immediately it just super blurry. So we really need to do a focus stacking. And that is to take many, many photos and changing the, the focus. Let me turn on the next one. The, that's the D2 up there. This one has a, a grid. It's a 10 degree, you know, it looks like this. It's quite a small one for Pro 40. You just put it on. Tiny, 10 degree honeycomb grid. Very good. Should get more of those. And then I have a big zoom reflector, not big, uh, like a normal <laughs> zoom reflector with a five degree grid on that one. So that's flash number A, <laughs> number A. And there is some light. And I actually think this one, it should be more like something like that. I think I had it. Uh, we can take a shot with that one. Yeah, full power. There we go. I think I had it a bit more something like Yes, something like this. And this flash looks terrible, of course, right now. But this is the main... I wanted to have some light from the top because we need to light up the face of the watch somehow. That can be a bit tricky because you get this uh, hazy feeling. You know, it's, there is no contrast at all. So we need to fix that. But this is the, I think it's kind of nice at around this bezel with the numbers. Uh, right now it's not that nice, but I will fix that with a B plus W Pro polarizing filter. And this can eliminate this overcast on the crystal. Uh, it's popular to use when shooting cars, car photography outside, and uh, you want to eliminate the reflections in the front window you would like to see inside the car. And also if you're shooting outside, there is water, and then you put on this, and then you can see the fish, something like this. And also in product photography it can be useful sometimes. In this case, I'm not sure I will use it for taking away this overcast crystal. Overcast. I will show you. Now I'm starting to turn this. Now it's 100% full twist. And, and you look at the picture and suddenly it's, um, you know, if you go back and look at the image before, you see all this and also this glossy area becomes, uh, takes away these reflections. The reflection from the diffusion, but I don't think this is enough 
for the crystal and the, the dial, we need more contrast there. This, the reason why it's not working, because I have the light in the wrong angle, but I would like to have it at this angle, because I think it looks nice on the bezel. So I would twist it a bit and let some light hit this bezel. Something like this. You see at the figure four, I think it looks nice with this uh, gradient up there. Now we can turn on the last flash. This one is this circle, and then we have the other one we had before. If you take a shot, you will see it hits the, the lower lugs, you know, you get this gradient there. So we can use this diffusion. I have angled it, so it's kind of almost the same angle as the watch. If you look at the camera, it's twisted extremely much. I often do it like this. Instead of shooting straight with the camera straight and then twist everything else, then I just tilt the camera. There we have the four flashes. One for the background, one for the side, one for the bezel and face, the watch, and the last one, it's for the, the lugs, so that will get a nice gradient. But what about this crystal? I just used something round. This is for my tobacco. Uh, I think it's perfect size. And I will just put it up on diffusion and uh, it will cover the face. Mostly I think it will reflect black instead of white diffusion in the crystal. Maybe around there uh, before all this terrible, no contrast because um, the crystal is reflecting the diffusion. Now it's reflecting this, this black thing. And you can actually see it here in this uh, date bubble. It's there. I think we have to retouch this out actually. Let's take another one. And I'm changing the focus so we can see a bit. See this one. This part is uh, brushed. It's kind of more like matte style. The, uh, and then I want to show that it is um, brushed, brushed steel. And on this side, it's super glossy. It's like a mirror. It's polished steel. And then we cannot have that much of a gradient like this one. Actually, I have a bit here because I love gradient. But if you... <sighs> You can only use can or can, but you can, if you're shooting glossy stuff to show that it's glossy, you need to have a hard edge, shadow edge, hard shadow edge. Now we have this kind of where it goes in there, but it also, we also have a bit on the top there when it goes over to the brushed area, the lug there. So it's good to show this. And I'm quite okay with on the brushed. It's kind of semi-matte uh, material, this brushed. So I think it's beautiful to have a, a gradient. It's hard not to have a gradient on something that goes like this, you know, because the it fades off. You should never shoot uh, used watch watches. This is a used watch and you will see, when you're shooting this close, you will see all the scratches and dings and dirt. So there will be a lot of cleaning in uh, Photoshop. But what can you do? But I will try to blow away the worst stuff. With this canned air, it's a must when you're shooting watches. I will take another one. What else can we say about this? Yes, right now, I haven't turned the polarizing filter. So let me twist it so we will get the nicest light we can have on the bezel. And this will be, yes, this is kind of nice. I think we have all the parts now, but the tricky thing here is that we need to focus stack. We will take a lot of images, I will put the focus on the closest point, probably the crown or the um, 
right down log and you see the crown it's I have pulled it out because it needs to be pulled out so I can set the hands like Rolex I have the hands it's always 10 past 10 and uh, the second hand is always around 30 two seconds or something and this one also have like a blue hand it's a GMT watch I need to take a shot I want the this Rolex uh, the crown to be straight up so I need to turn it and I actually think I'm, I will I will screw it in or at least push it in a bit and take a separate shot for that actually I have to take many shots I have to stack the crown so we can stack them together in Helicon Focus and then put that in to the final shot so it cannot be pulled out it looks kind of fishy and all you watch nerds geeks you will notice that I have taken away the link the bracelet for this watch and there is a blue rubber strap and I know I will know I will get questions about this and that's a rubber strap from uh, Vulcan straps I can put it in the link below if you're interested to check them out so okay you know guys the reason why it takes so long is because it's very hard to control the lights because they're quite big so you when you set one light, okay, nice, and then you start with another one, and third one, and suddenly everything looks crazy. And then you realize this flash is affecting the side, you know. And I want to turn on the highlight warning to see if it's, it's just actually the background that is blown out. So maybe we should go down a bit. What happens if I go down the whole stop? Yes, this is probably nicer. Let's go for that one. And now we can, I think we should take the final shot. Let me just test one tiny, tiny thing here. Yes. This is so much nicer. I just blocking the light, this lower uh, flash, I'm blocking it a bit so it will not hit. It will create this uh, black edge here. And that was separated from this is a previous one it was separated from the background this is so much nicer i think we have to put this up somehow don't be lazy i've been doing this for 100 million hours now so manfrotto light stand you know you can tweak this forever you have to look through the whole watch you know every detail let's do this because it's it will add a lot to the image i think i think all the parts looks fantastic now sort of I think the B cell you know I want this two highlights so now I will start this video is probably I will take a black shot frame so I know I will start to do the focus stacking when I'm inside capture one Okay, now we have all the shots to do a focus stacking, so everything will be sharp. Now I need to pull in the crown and do another one without moving anything. Take a test shot. I didn't screw it in, I just pushed it in. Yes, I think this will be good enough. Now I will do another one, focusing only on the crown, so we can take this separately to put together with the, the other image. So guys, ugh. wow, one hour and 13 minutes. Wow, very long day. This shoot took very long. That's how it is with watches. I didn't warn you before, but now I will warn you, stay away from watches. That's very, very complicated. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you are doing good and it's not too tough for you in these hard times for many, 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 many people around the world. 
We're all in it together and I hope it will end soon, but we'll see. So take care, stay, stay at home. And uh, if you like this video and you would like to see more, then you can hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. And I would like to thank all the coffee supporters. If you'd like to be a coffee supporter, what is a coffee supporter? You might wonder. Well, that is, what is that? Well, it's all the guys that are supporting me, supporting this YouTube channel to keep it alive. Yes, please subscribe. It's very appreciated. And as always, see you next time.